I'm Dan Galpin for The Developer Show, and this is your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. We released Android 13 Beta 4, the final pre-release update for testing and development. So now is the time to complete your final compatibility testing and publish any updates ahead of the final release. This is particularly important for SDK, library, tooling, and game engine developers, so your downstream developers aren't blocked. Android 13 includes privacy features like the new notification permission and photo picker, productivity features like themed app icons and per app language support, and modern standards like HDR video, Bluetooth LE audio, and MIDI 2.0 over USB. It extends the Android 12 L updates that give you better tools to take advantage of tablet and large screen devices. You can try Beta 4 today on modern Pixel devices, and you can get the Android 13 Beta on select devices from several of our partners. More information on the Android 13 Beta is linked below. We announced that the various Jetpack Compose libraries are moving to independent versioning schemes beginning with the Compose Compiler, which is tightly coupled with the Kotlin version. Compose Compiler 1.2 brings support for Kotlin 1.7, while being both backwards and forwards compatible with the Compose UI libraries and the Compose Runtime library. You can upgrade your Compose Compiler to 1.2 stable and use Kotlin 1.7 while leaving your other Compose libraries on their current version. You can learn more about our plans for decoupling versioning for the different Compose library groups, as well as how to start using the latest Compose compiler and Kotlin versions on the post. We announced that JetBrains joined as co-maintainer of the open source Bazel plugin for IntelliJ IDEA, which allows you to import Bazel project files and run Bazel tests and binaries within IntelliJ. As co-maintainer, the JetBrains team reviews and merges contributions, collaborates on the roadmap, and monitors the CI pipeline, including the overall health of the plugin's GitHub repo. This new maintenance structure enables fast review and merging of developer requests, such as support for Scala, and support for more contributions to and iteration of the plugin. Now, the link below includes more information, including how to join the Bazel IntelliJ plugin Google group to discuss your feature request ideas and contributions. We published All You May Need for VQA are Image Captions, Exploring Visual Question Answering, or VQA Data Generation. Now, VQA is a multitask and open-ended machine learning task that requires a model to answer a visual question about an image that involves solving multiple technical research questions in computer vision and natural language understanding simultaneously. Its applications include assisting the blind to the visually impaired, communicating with robots, or enhancing the user's visual experience with external knowledge. The paper discusses visual question generation with question answering validation, a pipeline that works by rewriting a declarative caption into multiple interrogative question answer pairs, leveraging large scale image text data and large capacity neural text to text models to achieve automatic VQA data generation. The post has lots more detail on how we demonstrated it's possible to automatically generate high quality VQA data at scale. The Gateway API has graduated to beta enabling many new features in Kubernetes, including traffic splitting, header modification, and forwarding traffic to backends in different namespaces. The beta milestone reflects newfound stability, with over a dozen implementations of the API, many of which are passing a comprehensive set of conformance tests. This ensures that users will have a consistent experience when using this API, regardless of environment or underlying implementation. Because this API is built with custom resource definitions, or CRDs, it can be installed in any Kubernetes cluster, newer than version 1.16, which was released almost three years ago. The link below has lots more information, including how to get started and a preview of what's to come. Ads Creative Studio is now globally available with more features to help teams collaborate, create and customize display and video ads. You can use it to create multiple or even hundreds of versions of a single display or video ad customized for different audiences, locations, languages, or context. To make it easier for media and creative teams to work together, Projects made in Ads Creative Studio can be seamlessly shared to all of our media platforms. The post has lots more information, including ways in which Ads Creative Studio has helped brands and agencies cut down on time and costs, facilitate collaboration between media and creative teams, and crafted customized ads aimed at relevant audiences. To learn more about all of this week's stories, make sure to check the description box below for all the links. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe. I'm Dan Galpin for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Check out more Dev Show updates here and on the U Google Developers YouTube page. <laughs>